Hi everybody, Andy here again, down on the beach once again. Lovely walking along in the sand. Um, what, saw something the other day on the, on the BBC News actually. They were talking about people's salaries. And it came out about the discrepancy which we still have between sort of male and female salaries in the workplace. And they were asking people about what their salaries were, whether they'd be willing to divulge what their salary was, because they felt that that was one of the reasons that the inequality does exist. Not the only reason, but one of the reasons. And I could see where they're coming from. If you don't know what that person sitting next to you is uh, earning, <laughs> how do you know if there's an inequality exists? But anyway, cut to the point, really, was that they were asking one particular person. And he said, well, I'm not going to tell you what my salary is. I said, well, well, why not? And he said, well, because if I tell you what my salary is, people will make their mind up about me straight away just by hearing that. And I think that's very true. It's one of those sort of preconceptions. We get them in all walks of life, that just being one of them. If I was to tell you how much I earned, you may well think, well, he lives in this type of house, he's got that type of car, he's got 2.4 children, and all that type of thing. Um, you know, he's got a nice pension, a steady job, all those types of things. And it's very, very true. And the more you think about it, the more that comes out. Um, if I tell you the sort of music that I like, you will probably automatically expect me to conform to a certain type of stereotype, um, if, especially if you don't know me. And this happens online, especially. You think you don't necessarily see people, especially sort of chat rooms, all those type of things. Even on Twitter, I should imagine, as well. Um, you put out there that you like Led Zeppelin, for example, and you expect to see some, probably of my sort of age. Um, but if it was something like Black Sabbath or something a bit heavier, you might expect me to sort of be dressing up in motorbike outfits and that sort of stuff. Yes, we all do conform to those stereotypes to an extent, but they limit us so much, and that's one of the things that annoys me. And I know people conform to this because people do dress in certain ways. Those, you know, but there again, you see someone walking down the street who dresses in a certain way, and you automatically expect them to act in a certain way. And this is one of those things that happens with especially teenagers nowadays. They dress in a certain way, whether it's because they want to be included, and maybe some teenagers can chime in on this, whether they feel that it includes them in some way, makes them part of a, of a group, part of a tribe maybe, where you get that sort of togetherness feeling, um, you're fight, it's you fighting against the world type of thing. Uh, or, or maybe sometimes they do it for shock value, I know that as well, and it's a rebellion thing as well. But uh, we see people and we automatically assume and we take, give certain people a wide berth because of the way that they look. And yet, they're the sort of person, if a little old lady fell down in the street or needed a hand, they may well do that. You know, why should you be judged just by what you, you want to wear? Because if you like to wear something, what the hell? You should be wearing exactly what you want to wear. You shouldn't have to worry, as I've done before now. Um, and you put something on and you think, well, no, I don't want, to look, don't want to wear that as much as you want to wear it. You don't, you don't wear it because you're thinking to yourself, well, if I wear that, certain people are going to think certain things. Women have this problem, especially. <laughs> Not being a woman, I can't comment completely. But uh, a lot of women, they're going along, they want to go out for the night, and they want to dress in that nice short skirt or something like that. And their husband might say, you're not going out dressed like that. Or they go out and people expect a certain thing. Um, you know exactly where I'm coming from on this. Um, they see a person dressed in a certain way and it sends out signals. But why does it do that? <laughs> and I suppose I'm as guilty of that as, as anybody else. I see people dressed in certain ways, whether they be youngsters, older people, whatever. And you've all instantly formed those preconceptions. And I think that's one of the, the biggest failings that we've got as a race. And I'm getting lost on the beach and don't want to get uh, bogged down in lots of sand. So I'm going to go back over this way. Um, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this. I'm probably getting a bit dark here. Um, but it's just one of those things that came out and I thought I'd just turn on the camera and start talking about it. Because it is annoying and I think it's one of those things that holds us back in certain ways. That we prejudge people, whatever. Even a job title or something like that. The type of films that we like, the type of clothes we wear, music, etc. The type of newspaper that we read. And that's a, that's a big one, I think, over here. There was always that, um, uh, there was a famous sort of sketch or something that said about uh, people that read newspapers over here in England and it was I think I think if I remember rightly I'm gonna get this wrong but the Times was read by the people who ran the country the Daily Telegraph was, was read by the people that owned the country sort of thing um, the Daily Mail was read by people who feel they ought to run the country um, the Daily Mirror didn't uh, readers didn't care as long as um, 
It was a, a left-wing party. The people who read it, the Sun didn't care as long as they had big breasts. And uh, the Financial Times was read by people who had pink bathrooms. <laughs> but you know exactly where I'm coming from with that. That's probably completely wrong. I'm sure someone could correct me on that one. But that's uh, it's not easy, this, you know. <laughs> Trying to vlog and talk. It's a trouble. You walk around and you get completely lost and you suddenly think, oh, here I am. Um, right, back to the subject, Andy. So that's one of the big ones. A newspaper defines what, what your political beliefs are. Generally, that shouldn't be the case. Okay, newspapers conform to that. I know they do. And you see people on the train and you see, you see someone reading a particular newspaper and you instantly form an opinion about it. You hear of these stories of, <laughs> whether it's true or not, of people reading a, a respectable newspaper, if you want to put it in those terms, and they've got something else <laughs> hidden inside, the not so respectable one, or a copy of Playboy or something like that underneath. So, just a thought there. Preconceptions, do you, you know, do you conform to, I hate preconceptions, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty non-conformist, I was asked this question the other day by someone who's doing a collaboration video, uh, to name one, one word that sums up your character, and I could not think of one, so I asked my wife, <laughs> and she said, non-conformist, and I thought, hmm, that's pretty good, although I, I try not to, but as I said, even I sometimes think, I don't think I should be wearing that, but uh, ultimately, I don't care, I've said loads of times, I want to grow old disgracefully and throw those preconceptions out the window so that when someone sees me, they're going to think, jeez, what the hell does he do? <laughs> what are his political beliefs? What music does he like? And let's confuse people, let's throw those preconceptions and those stereotypes out the window. So, vote for change, <laughs> vote for non-conformity. Anyway, thanks for your time, I shall leave it there. Thanks very much, goodbye. I know people...